A Jeep can drive through three feet of water without stalling. Your modern SUV drowns in six inches. That's not nostalgia talking, that's physics. In 1940, when most vehicles couldn't handle dirt roads, Army engineers built a machine that could cross rivers, climb 60-degree slopes, and run on terrible fuel, using technology simpler than what's in your toaster. You've probably seen those boxy old Jeeps in disaster footage, driving through floods while modern vehicles float away helplessly. You assumed they were just tougher back then. You have no idea what engineering compromises made that possible. Why can 1940s technology outperform modern SUVs in the one thing that matters most? What did designers sacrifice to achieve the impossible? And why did every car manufacturer since then choose comfort over capability? Let's explore the process. In 1940, the U.S. Army gave designers an impossible challenge. Build a vehicle that's lightweight, indestructible, simple, and cheap, all at once. These requirements contradict each other. Lightweight means fragile. Indestructible means heavy. Simple means limited. Cheap means poor quality. You can't have all four. Specifications were brutal. Under 2,000 pounds, four-wheel drive, fit three soldiers, carry 800 pounds, climb slopes that would flip normal vehicles, forge streams, run for days without maintenance, cost less than a tractor. You probably think military vehicles get unlimited budgets. Everyone does. But the Army had to equip millions of soldiers with vehicles that couldn't break. Expensive solutions were useless if they couldn't be mass-produced by tens of thousands. Three companies tried. Bantam, Willys, and Ford. What emerged was the Willys MB, a vehicle that solved contradictions by refusing to compromise where it mattered and aggressively compromising everywhere else. The flat fender design looks crude, like someone forgot to curve the metal. That crudeness is genius. Curved fenders require expensive stamping dies and multiple operations. Flat steel can be stamped once using cheap dies. The Willys MB uses flat panels everywhere. Fenders, hood, body. Not because designers lacked skill, because flat steel saved 40% on tooling while weighing less than curved panels of equivalent strength. Now here's where it gets interesting. Those flat fenders everyone thinks are classic styling. They're structural members. The fender braces tie into the frame, adding rigidity without weight. Modern SUVs use curved fenders as decorative covers. They add weight without strength. Jeep designers couldn't afford decoration. Every part served multiple functions or didn't exist. The hood has two tiny latches instead of complex mechanism. Why? Complex latches break, simple latches don't. When maintaining vehicles in jungles with basic tools, simple beats sophisticated. But the real genius is invisible. The engine can breathe underwater. Most engines pull air from low in the engine bay. Convenient for designers, but fatal in water. When the air intake goes under, engine ingests water and destroys itself instantly. The Willys MB puts the air intake at the highest point, right behind the windshield. This means the vehicle can ford streams up to its hood line because the engine never swallows water. But here's the kicker. The carburetor was designed for terrible fuel. During World War II, gasoline quality was inconsistent. Different octanes contaminated with water, sometimes mixed with kerosene. The Willys carburetor was deliberately crude, with wide tolerances that could handle anything combustible. You've probably cursed when your car won't start because you got bad gas from a sketchy station. Willys engineers in 1940 assumed all fuel was bad and designed accordingly.
Modern cars optimize for perfect conditions. Jeeps optimized for worst-case scenarios. The electrical system lives high and exposed, not hidden in fenders where water collects. Every component sits above the frame. Water drains naturally instead of pooling around electronics. Modern SUVs bury electrical systems in wheel wells for aesthetics. Then add thousands in waterproofing to protect badly placed components. So why did modern manufacturers abandon these principles? The answer is comfort. Flat fenders mean your shoulder hits metal getting in. High mounted intakes mean engine noise by your ear. Simple suspensions mean rough ride. Modern SUVs chose refinement. They added sound deadening, curved panels, hidden components, complex suspensions. Each addition made vehicles quieter, smoother, prettier. Each also made them heavier, more complex, more fragile. The Toyota Land Cruiser stayed closer to Jeep principles than most, but even Toyota gradually softened, adding features, hiding components. The market demanded luxury, not capability. You've watched YouTube videos of old Jeeps outperforming new SUVs off-road and wondered how that's possible when technology improved. Technology did improve for different goals. Modern vehicles optimized for the 99% of driving that's paved roads. Jeeps optimized for the 1% where conditions are terrible. When that 1% arrives, century-old engineering wins. So those flat fenders and crude mechanicals aren't just vintage charm. They're proof that solving contradictions requires brutal honesty about priorities. The Willys MB chose capability over comfort, simplicity over sophistication, function over form. Every flaw was an intentional trade-off. Modern SUVs reversed every choice, gaining refinement while losing indestructibility. You're not being nostalgic when you respect old Jeeps. You're recognizing that engineering honesty beats marketing sophistication when conditions get real. And maybe you'll look at modern SUVs differently now. Because you're someone who understands what gets sacrificed when everything optimizes for the easy 99%. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work. One story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.